Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Snow Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we'll start with attacks against password managers. Of course, I've mentioned a few in the past. And let's start with LastPass again. Google's project, Sarah, of course, has spent a lot of time with LastPass recently and found a couple of vulnerabilities already. The latest vulnerability is kind of interesting because it affected more than just one specific piece of code. The problem here was how LastPass used JavaScript. Now, in order to find password forms, LastPass does inject JavaScript into web pages that are being loaded in the browser. And Google's Project Zero here, of course, looked at the Chrome extension for LastPass. This JavaScript is typically safe. It's isolated from the page itself, but it also has special privileges. It can, for example, execute code on the host. The problem here with LastPass was that they didn't initialize all the variables that are used in their privileged JavaScript, which then can lead to these variables being defined by the page, not by this privileged world or this uh, privileged JavaScript. Now, LastPass was very fast in releasing a patch for this particular problem, and the patch is available, so you should download this as soon as possible. The next issue is with KeePass, and that's uh, really not uh, all that severe. It's really a nice presentation that uh, was presented at B-Sides New Orleans, and it goes over various ways how KeePass can be attacked. Now, of course, like any one of these systems, you can try and brute force uh, passwords that are used uh, to encrypt the database, so they're going over Hashcat here, for example. Also, if you don't run the latest version of KeePass. And we're talking here about version 235, which was, I believe, released early in January. Then it is possible to extract some of the keys from memories and there are tools now available that will allow you to decrypt the password database using these keys retrieved from memory. So these attacks are not related necessarily to you going to a malicious web page that injects JavaScript or the like, but instead they only really apply if you are running KeePass on an already compromised system or in some cases on systems where you don't trust all users on that particular system. Certainly somewhat a valid attack vector for these password managers uh, because one thing you definitely want to prevent is that if you do infect your system that all of your passwords are getting stolen. But then again, once you have things like keystroke loggers or so installed, it's sort of a game over. And sticking with security tools here for one more story, Silence. Silence uh, made a name for itself uh, by essentially providing better anti-malware protection than we had in the past. David Fletcher from Black Hills Information Security has an interesting blog how he sort of managed to bypass their agents uh, with a little tool that they wrote and actually published uh, that does use the view state in HTTP requests in order to exfiltrate data and essentially set up a command and control channel. In the end, even if you talk about behavior-based anti-malware tools, you still talk about signatures, just about signatures of behavior instead of random strings or so as we found in more traditional anti-malware tools. And if you looked recently at Windows exploits, uh, one of the tools that attackers like to use uh, to escalate privileges is always Mimikatz. Mimikatz is a tool that allows you to extract credentials from memory on Windows. Well, there is now sort of a Linux equivalent Mimikatz 
Penguin. Mimic Penguin does essentially do the same thing. It does extract credentials from memory for things like Apache, OpenSSH, and the like. Pretty neat and looks like easy to use tool. Now you need root in order to run the tool, but it's still important because the credentials that you extract from with the tool may actually give you access to other systems, not just the system that you are logged in that you have compromised right now. And I think it was last week that I talked about the Windows 2003 IS6 exploit. Well, uh, there is no Metasploit module out there to take advantage of the WebDAV vulnerability in this rather ancient combination of software. If you're absolutely desperate and for whatever reason just can't patch a system that runs WebDAV, Windows 2003, and IS, and maybe an old SharePoint server, well, first of all, upgrade it, uh, move it to a new system. But uh, if you absolutely can't, there is a third party out patch out there from a company called Zero Patch. They pride themselves of doing micro patching and they developed a little patch for this particular vulnerability. Like I said, I only recommend it sort of as a solution of last resort. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.